Uh, hello, hello. Um, this morning I've been doing lots of work in the hotel. Uh, that's all done now, so I think it's time to explore. I'm gonna try and risk it and work out how buses work here. Um, no idea what time they're coming, but going into Valletta, have a look around. Fingers crossed, we're getting lost. Ugh. At least it's sunny though. Right, here we are, uh, in the centre of Valletta now, uh, survived the bus journey in, not too confusing fortunately. Um, absolutely stunning first impressions, it is gorgeous. Uh, on top of that is a beautiful day. Um, random fountain, no idea what it is, but this place is amazing. Right, let's go and explore. So I've realised this is probably going to be the worst guided tour of Valletta ever because um, so I have very little uh, knowledge of what Malta is and know absolutely nothing about Valletta but I think I've just spotted somewhere uh, which is a bar I found on the internet to go check out and this gorgeous little street. Have a look at this. So this is the one I'm thinking of, it's the one with the little red shutters down there. Wow. Yeah, it turns out this is not the right one. Um, so the place I'm looking for is called Bridge Bar, but I think after just quickly searching for it, uh, it's round the corner. Okay, so it turns out this is not going particularly well for finding where I'm meant to be. Um, I think from now on, this is now gonna be an idiot's guide to Valletta, as I keep seem to be getting lost. Uh, so this is my third Google. So one of the good benefits of getting lost is you do find some things you don't expect. So this way, it's kind of all right. There are worse views. There are definitely worse views. And I think I found it. So the good news is I found it. This is Bridge Bar. The downside, it kind of looks like it's been repaired. So I think I've easily found my favourite view in the whole of Malta, or definitely Valletta so far. Have a look at this. It's absolutely stunning. I think there's about to be a cannon firing as well. So we'll go have a little bit of a look at that. Okay, so things I've noticed about Malta so far. One, there are a lot of steps and a lot of hills, and I mean a lot of steps. So uh, make sure you wear some nice decent shoes if you ever want to come here. Um, and then also, I've never seen so many uh, red phone boxes, even in England, it's absolutely crazy. So we've got phone boxes, letter boxes. It's so strange, it's like going back to my childhood 20 years ago and like actually having people with landlines, it's, it's so strange. Um, but I realised yesterday I didn't really talk much about what the concert was yesterday or what I'm doing today. Uh, so yesterday, let's get up all the details. Uh, so yesterday was Elena Bashkarova, um, who's a most amazing pianist. Um, and she did a, a whole concert of Mozart and Vorjak and Bartok. Uh, as I said yesterday, the Bartok was a huge standout for me, which is Sonata. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the concert. Nice and quite an intimate hall as well. It's quite small, an old converted church. Uh, it still meant it's quite intimate as well, which I really liked, for, especially when it's uh, just one person in a recital. Uh, but today's a bit more complicated. So we have not one, but two concerts to go to, and they're like, there's no time between them, and they're at different venues. So the, the first concert today is a, a cello recital with Mihai Rio, which I've definitely pronounced wrong, and uh, Anna Malikova. I was speaking to Anna last night at dinner. She's really, really nice. Uh, and there's the repertoire of that's really, really good, uh, which I've just completely lost on my phone, but off the top of my head, it was Chopin and Brahms, and I think Schumann, or Schubert. Schubert is the arpeggioni sonata. 
And then the second concert we've got today uh, is an orchestra concert with the uh, State Orchestra Academy soloists from Kazakhstan, uh, which should be quite good. Uh, and they're joined by uh, Philip Kopachevsky, and they're doing a concerto for piano uh, by the composer in residence here at the festival, who is Alexei Shaw. Um, really, really looking forward to hearing him. He's uh, been in residence for two years before this. We started in 2017 as a residency, I think, till 2021. I'm really intrigued to see what he's doing, uh, but also one of my own personal favourite pieces, they're doing Tchaikovsky, Romeo and Giulietta Overture as well, uh, which should be really exciting. Uh, I'm totally, totally intrigued to see what, or see what the uh, Kazakhstan Orchestra is like. Um, and yeah, but although the slight issue for us is that one concert starts at seven and it's an hour long, it ends at eight, and the second concert starts at eight. So I think I'm sprinting between the two at some point, so hopefully I'm not gonna miss too much of either one. Um, it's going to be interesting, so really looking forward to both of those uh, and at the moment I'm stood on part of the, what I'm guessing is the fort, again back to terrible, terrible uh, tour guide of Malta um, and the view is again pretty damn good. I, genuinely I'm pretty certain I'm going to say the phrase, this view is amazing constantly during this week. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. Okay, so there's a, a slight change of plan. Um, so I'm now only going to the second concert. Uh, so the symphony orchestra uh, concert today, um, which is both good and bad news. Uh, good because I'm not having to do any rushing around, which is always massively appreciated. Um, bad news is it just mean I'm missing the cello recital, which I was really looking forward to. Right, here we are. Uh, looks good. Trying to find more inside now. <laughs> Oh. On my way to find uh, my seat now, and this place just keeps getting cooler and cooler. It feels like I've been managed to find my seat, um, and this concert hall is actually really not what I expected from what the building looked like on the outside. It seemed to be quite a long uh, rectangle shape for the whole thing, really, really straight and narrow. Uh, and then actually, it's the concert hall is nice and wide, really big, really big purpose built stage. Um, Very nicely surprised. I was thinking it should be very like long and narrow when it first came in. Um, also, possibly the comfiest chairs I've had for a long time at a concert. Um, so, I think it's going to start to fill up. Um, I'll see you guys shortly. Right, so uh, back at the hotel now. Um, the end of the concert was a bit mad, which I'll explain in a second, but it's now really late. Um, so back here, quick showers. Um, at the end of the concert I had to run quite quickly as I was doing a quick chat with tonight's pianist uh, Philip Kobolachewski. Um, yeah, good concert again. Uh, the, the orchestra was uh, very good. Uh, there was some stuff that I, I wasn't expecting. Um, it's a uh, so for Tchaikovsky, Romeo and Juliet, it's a very fast performance uh, and also some bits I wasn't expecting in there. Um, concert hall was absolutely stunning. So uh, it was an old uh, Knights Hospitalier hospital. Um, yeah, absolutely blown away by the venue. It was phenomenal. Um, and then for the rest of the concert, there was lots of Kazakhstan music, uh, something I'd never experienced before. Um, so that was really interesting to hear. Um, so uh, that was really good. And then to cap it all off, um, Alexei Shaw's uh, piece was the, the first time I've heard any of his music as well. And that was all based on various different locations. Um, yeah, very emotive, uh, sort of, it was very good to try and sort of ca capture the feeling of, of each of those places. But uh, as you can tell, I 100% need to go to sleep now. Um, so I'll catch you all uh, tomorrow. Bye bye. Work it all in time.